The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us pray to God our Father that we may sincerely call to mind our sins as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us sit to listen to the word of God. For the grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all. Teaches us to reject an irreligious way of life and worldly greed. To live in this world as responsible people. Upright and saving God. While we await our blessed hope, the glorious manifest manifestation of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He, he gave himself for us to redeem us from all evil and to purify a person to be his own and dedication of what is good. The word of the Lord. We now stand to listen to the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. You, O oh Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory with all his angels, he will sit on the throne of glory. All the nations will be brought before him, and as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, so will he divide them placing the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. The king will say to those on his right, Come, blessed of my father, take possession of the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me into your house. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to see me. Then the upright will ask him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and give you food, thirsty and give you drink, or a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick, or in prison, and go to see you. The king will answer, Truly, I say to you, whenever you did this to one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, as the president mentioned at the start of this program in a very special way as a family. Members of staff and faculty students, members of SIPALAM, and members of the Catholic Women's Association and well-wishers of, of CUIB, we launch the Jubilee Year of Mercy. It is a year of favor, a, a year of God's grace. And for us today, in a very special way, before celebrating that Mass with the Chancellor, we are going to celebrate the Sacrament of Penance and Reconciliation. Not only for Catholics, non-Catholics, we are also invited to meet the priests for counseling. It's also time for us to be reconciled to our God. It is time for us to be reconciled to one another. 
it is fitting, brothers and sisters, that this uh, celebration is taking place in the month of December. It is taking place in the season of Advent. Very strategic. In the month of December, we are ending the year. In the season of Advent, we are preparing to receive our Lord Jesus Christ at Christmas. We sit as a family to evaluate our relationships with one another, our relationship with God. We examine ourselves to thank God first and foremost for the times that grace has won in our lives. For the times that we have been faithful to God's grace, when we have actually loved one another, when we have actually loved God. But we also sit and look at ourselves critically and honestly and accept from the bottom of our hearts the many times also that we have failed God and that we have failed one another. This ceremony, brothers and sisters, is a time for us to be reunited to one another. It is a time for us to be reunited to God. It is a time for us to return to our Father. The sacrament of penance and reconciliation is a return to our Father. And as we return to our Father, we are returning to who we truly are. God's children, righteous in the real sense of the word, from our inmost depth of heart. That is what we are celebrating. And so, St. Paul tells us in, in the first reading that what we are doing is actually bringing to birth what Christ has already won for us, that reconciliation, that freedom from worldly lives, from wayward living, from a religious way of life, to that real life in the spirit, the life that he won for us through his death, resurrection, and ascension. And in our gospel, in that short, in that short pericope of the scene of the last judgment, we are asked to evaluate ourselves on how much we have loved one another, how much we have clothed one another, how much we have given water to the thirsty, visited the sick, those in prison. How often have we loved one another? When we evaluate ourselves, brothers and sisters, through the light of the word of God, we reconcile ourselves with him. It is a wonderful thing, brothers and sisters, to understand that the word mercy, the word mercy has its origin in a Hebrew word, which is a translation for the womb of a woman. In the womb of a woman, we have nothing else but love, where that miracle of life takes place. And so mercy is actually God's womb for us, where we are born again. We are regenerated for who we truly are. From the depths of our, of our failure to grace, God gives birth to us again by cleansing us of our sins. We are reconciled with the church. This day, my brothers and sisters, will be a day of remembrance for all of us. Let us think about God's mercy, not our sins. There is no sin that God cannot forgive. None. And as Pope Francis always says, the problem of confession is not God. The problem of confession is ourselves. We are the ones who are afraid to meet him. But like the father of the prodigal son, he is always waiting for us. Always waiting for us. It is an opportunity, brothers and sisters. There is no need to be afraid. There is no need, there is no need to be ashamed. God loves us, loves us so dearly. And today, he wants to show that love for us by forgiving our sins and reconciling us to one another. So let us have the courage, the courage based on faith to approach, to approach the priests who are ready. They are ministers of God who have been appointed to cleanse us of our sins. Do not be afraid to encounter them. Do not be afraid asking yourself, what will Father say of me after I have confessed my sins to him? When you get into the confessional, you, in the confessional, you meet nobody else but Jesus. Jesus is the one you encounter. 
And he's going to touch you with that hand of faith and tell you, my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, your sins are forgiven you. Go in peace. So faith for everybody. To end this reflection, I share a story to tell us how confession can reunite people. There is this wonderful church writer known as Scott Hahn. Scott Hahn once was on his way from one state in America to another to give a talk. And at the airport, there was a delay in the flight. Scott Hahn became very impatient. He was worried. And he wasn't the only one. There were many other persons in the airport waiting for the plane. And they all became so impatient and angry. And in that angry atmosphere, nobody could speak to the other. Everybody was boiling in disappointment and anger in their hearts. Scott Hahn had prepared himself that after his talk, he would go for confession. So he was already getting worried that that confession may, may not be celebrated because he would be late. But as he sat there in that airport, he saw a gentleman in a black suit. And when he looked at the gentleman, he saw that just in, at the neck of the gentleman, there was something white. He walked to the gentleman, whispered to his ears, asked him, are you a priest? The man looked at him and said, yes, I am a Catholic priest. He said, can, I, can you listen to my confession? The priest looked at him in the airport. Well, he said, okay, let's just move to that deserted place and you, I will listen to your confession. Scott Hahn went with the priest. As he was finishing, coming back to his seat, he saw another person looking at him. And the person walked to him and asked, is that a priest? Scott Hahn said, yes, that's a priest. Were you for confession? Scott Hahn said, yes, I was for confession. And the man immediately went for confession. By the time that this person was finishing, another one was asking the question, is that a priest? And before the priest realized, there was a whole line of persons in that airport ready for confession. And all of them went for confession. And after the confession, they all sat there. Silence was taken away. Reconciliation had been brought about. And immediately, they started discussing, laughing, and sharing with one another. And the, the delay of the plane or the flight did no longer disturb them. That is what confession can do to all of us. When we come for confession, we accuse ourselves. We realize that the problem is not in the world. The problem begins with me. And if I heal myself, if I reconcile myself with the world, then the world is going to be a better place. Someone has said, if you want to make the world a better place, look, take a deep look in yourself and change. Let us make the world a better place, brothers and sisters, by reconciling ourselves through the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. Amen. Briefly, brothers and sisters, we shall have an examination of conscience. Of course, each and every person will examine his or her conscience privately, but generally, we shall examine ourselves from the point of view of love of God, for the point of view of love of our neighbor, and for the point of view of love of self. As I read, we shall speak to ourselves inwardly how much we have loved God, our neighbor, and ourselves. Let us stand. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 30, we hear, You will love the Lord your God with all your heart. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart. And we ask ourselves the question, Am I open to God's presence? Or do I call on Him in time of need? What place has prayer in my life. Do I listen to the words of the gospel and
Christ Church. Do I live according to God's word? In my dealings with God, have I love and reverence for his name? Have I used his name in vain? Have I sworn in deceit? Do I take part regularly in Sunday masses or in Sunday services according to my church? Am I a true witness of Christ, of the Christian life in what I do and in what I say? What does the world say when they see me? Have I attempted to know the future by practice of magic or occult powers? Brothers and sisters, in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus Christ says, Just as I have loved you, so you shall love one another. How well disposed am I to forgive, to be merciful, and to be tolerant towards others? This is a year of mercy. As God forgives us, do we forgive others or do we still hold grudges? Do I judge or speak ill? Am I envious in thoughts and in words? Am I honest and respectful towards people who are different in color, in what they think and in their opinions? Have I abused others' property? Have I stolen others' property? Have I been the cause of the sufferings of others? Am I careless in the way I drive? Am I careless at work? As a parent, do I exercise responsible parenthood according to the teachings of the church? Do I teach my children by example? How well do I contribute to the well-being of the family as a parent? And as a child, how obedient am I to my parents and superiors? As a citizen, do I contribute to respect the environment and obey legitimate authority? Do I lead others astray through bad influence and bad example? In my, in my relationships with others, do I use them for my benefit, for my pleasure? How honest is my relationship with my friends, those of the opposite sex? What is the place of enjoyment in my life? The use of money. Is 
inordinate exercise of pleasure and enjoyment. Jesus Christ tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Do I love myself? That's the first question. Do I love myself? Do I take care of my body? Do I take care of my soul? Do I take care of my health? Do I truly live as a Christian? Or whatever religion I profess, does my conscience judge me in the way I carry out my religious activities? Spirituality. Spirituality. Have I behaved against my conscience out of fear or hypocrisy? Do I offend Christian decency in the way I dress, in the way I speak, in the way I behave? Is my heart pure? Am I pure in my thoughts? Have I engaged in activities that destroy the purity of my body and the purity of my soul? Be they listening or watching indecent movies and songs? How pure is my relationship? Have I engaged in acts of unchastity? Sexual immorality? Do I love myself? Am I a peacemaker? Am I humble? Brothers and sisters, these are just some aspects of our lives which are general. Each and every one of us standing before the merciful throne of God today knows where we have gone against that love for him and for one another. Let the Holy Spirit inspire us lighten our lives so that we see all the dark spots and with faith and humility open ourselves to god's mercy oh god you call us out of darkness into your own light from falsehood to truth from death to life you pour your holy spirit into our hearts opening our ears and giving us strength to follow where you call us and to lead a truly Christian life. Lord, you know all things. You know that we sincerely wish to serve you and our fellow neighbor. Look upon us and hear our prayers. Rouse up in, our, in us a spirit of penance and strengthen in us our purpose of amendment. Forgive us our sins and have pity on our weakness. Fill our hearts with the spirit of trust and generosity and make us true disciples of your son and living members of his church. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Together, brothers and sisters, let us now say those words which the Lord gave us as a pattern of our prayer. Our Father, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil i confess to almighty god and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and in what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore i ask blessed mary ever virgin all the angels and the saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god <laughs> Get up. 